All right, so um, by the way, for those of you who are wondering, uh, it's, yeah, we've been listening to the old man for a long time. When do we get Theo back? He's back next week. So uh, I know it's rough, so uh, y'all, y'all deal with me one more week and we'll be all right, all right, okay? So uh, that's our plan. So, um, uh, all right, I want to do something here, so, but, but I want to, if you'll allow me, I want to take a moment and be a little bit transparent with you because I, I need to explain something to you about how I feel about something. And it's, uh, it's, it's okay. I just, I just, let me be transparent. When I was a kid, when I was a kid way out in the country, you know, we were out in the woods and I would, I would lay out in the, in the grass out beside the double wide. Y'all, 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 y'all got to understand we uh, grew up in the double wide, but it was, it, daddy had built a basement, right? A full built basement. And then he had a, a, a crane put the double wide on top of the basement. So he didn't build the double wide. He bought the double wide, but he built the basement and they put the, cr- y'all, I was uptown redneck. You know what I'm saying? Y'all all right? So, so my house, my house started out with tires on it, but they took them off to put it. And if your house, if your house started with tires, but ain't got tires no more, you're uptown. Y'all understand? So at any rate, uh, <laughs> so I'm laying out in the grass and I would lay out in the grass out in the backyard and watch planes fly over top. And um, I, was, I was always amazed by them, and I would make up stories in my mind about where they were going and all these exotic places. My whole life, I've always loved the idea of travel, and as I got older, I've, I, I just, it always seemed wrong to me to turn down uh, an opportunity to travel, so I've, I've, I've traveled a lot. I've traveled a lot with, uh, with missions and with the church and with ministry. This summer, in fact, we're going to be up in, um, up in Canada speaking to a group of Canadian pastors this summer and uh, going to Canada in June. Somebody say amen, because if they ask me to go in February, mm -mm. (laughs) no, if the Lord told me to go to Canada in February, I would go, but he'd need to show up personally. You know, so uh, at any rate, so I've always liked to travel. And we've, the Lord has given us the uh, ability to travel a lot with, the, with ministry, but also just Tina and I traveling. So I'm going to tell a travel story. I've always felt guilty about telling these stories because sometimes people are like, hey, just talking about all the stuff he gets to do. And I don't, <laughs> y'all, it's not about that, all right? It's not. This is what I want to do. Some of y'all want to play golf. And I'll bet you I've spent less on travel. Than, I'm just saying. So... Um, some of y'all like to gamble, and I guarantee you, I've. Y'all all right? Some of y'all spent more up in PG County at MGM than I... y'all. Stay with me now. You didn't even get on an airplane to go to Vegas. At least there's a trip involved with that one, you know. Say, <laughs> oh, Nick, Wesleyans don't ever do that. Are you kidding me? In my first full time church, I'm the pastor, you know, and I wanted, to, I wanted, we had just remodeled. I wanted a grand piano on the on, on the stage. And I told the board this, and my, by, the vice chairman of my board owned a piano store. So I never got my baby grand piano. And then him and his kids went off on a trip to Vegas. Next thing I knew, within 10 days, there was a piano on my stage. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I never asked any questions. I just said, we got a piano. And uh, so it was nice. At any rate, um, so I've always liked to travel. So, so some years ago, Tina and I went on a trip, and we went to Hawaii. This was not a, this was not, this was not a church trip. <laughs> this was a me and Tina trip. In fact, we, uh, we, we went with some other folks, our six pack attitudes. So we had eight of us all together on the, on the trip. And so we, we, we went to, we went to Maui, the island of Maui. And, um, and so while we're at the island of Maui, we, we, uh, rented a car and there were eight of us. So we rented one of these, uh, suburbans, you know, so there's seven seats, which means that one of us had to sit in the back. So a full-blown 50-year-old human is sitting in the back in the trunk of the vehicle. And so watching out the back just like we used to do. I don't know if y'all ever remember this, but when they... Do y'all remember station wagons? Yeah, you get in the back of the station wagon for some reason. (laughs) They put a seat back there so people could watch their death coming. (laughs) Never made sense to me. I'd rather be in the pickup truck. Another story altogether. But... um, so, so we're, we're, we're riding along and I drove on the first, on the first half of this trip. And so we had, uh, we had decided we were going to take the road to Hana. Now, those of you who do not know what the road to Hana is, the road to Hana is not a, a highway is an exaggeration. It's a two lane road and, uh, it winds and it goes and it's like hour, hour, hours down this road. And it's like, there's nowhere to turn around. Once you start, you're committed and you go, now it's beautiful. There's, there's jungle all around you and, and there's waterfalls. And I, dude, y'all, I had an image for what this day was going to be like. 
And I was excited about it. We were going to see plants and, and things that I had never seen before. We were going to see beautiful waterfalls. And we were going to end up at this red sand beach where you had to go down this fairly treacherous path, which I thought was adventurous. And I was excited about it. Go down this red sand. That was my day, right? About 45 minutes in, a couple of them started getting sick. And I'm driving along, and they were, they're like, we're going to die. We're going to die. It's too dangerous. Oh, all this is happening around me, you know, and, I, and I'm suddenly, I'm starting to see all my plans slip away. <laughs> now, y'all, I would love to tell you that in that moment I handled it right, but I need you to understand I, I in no way went pastoral in this moment. I was getting mad. And I was driving hours, y'all, hours. It was beautiful. I was taking it in. I was doing all that, but, but back here was, and I So we get out and we finally, we, you know, we hours driving down this front, like that hairpin turn around, stop and wait because it's a one lane bridge and somebody's coming the other way. All the, all the, every time I tell this story, I love it because I can tell who's been to Maui and done this because they're sitting there smiling going, mm-hmm. It, it, is, it is quite a road. I just need you to know. So we finally, everybody's, we, we got to stop. I got to get out. I got to jump in. Yeah, I, I would, again, I'd love to say I went past all, but I didn't. I was like, can you just puke your guts out and let's get on with it? You know, you know one of those moments where we're like, hack the lung up and let's, get, let's move on. You know, so I, I know, I know something. I ain't never come back to this church. This man is not nice. <laughs> Sorry. You know, and so that's, uh, so we finally, we get down, we drive for hours and we find this bar. Calm down. I, I wasn't that mad. <laughs> All right. And, and so we, we go to this bar and we have a hamburger. While we're having the hamburger, it is decided that we're going back. I still was not in a pastoral mode, but I was also not in a fighting mode. And so I was like, you see the white knuckles? Okay. So uh, as we drove down the road to Hana, Dennis Vangato had sat in the back, right? And so I looked at Dennis. I said, Dennis, I'll sit in the back. So somebody else drove, and I crawled up in the back of that, that, that Suburban, and I curled myself up down in the back of that now, I, 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 I'm going to be honest with you. I did not sit back there and whine like a 12-year-old for the next three hours. 20 minutes? Yes. But, but then I started looking at all of it, and I started seeing things. And it, was, it really was beautiful. I, we drove by. I saw a rainbow eucalyptus driving down the road. Y'all, if you don't know what that is, look it up. It's a cool tree. So, so, so you know, all these things happening. I see all these things. But I was, what I expected didn't happen. And it frustrated me. It angered me. Now, did anybody do anything wrong? No. Will the road to Hana make you sick? In a heartbeat. Is all of this fair? Yes. But it wasn't, wasn't what it was supposed to be. Did you know God will do that to you sometimes? Do you know that sometimes God's plan is not at all what you had in mind? Joshua chapter 2. Uh, let's go back to Joshua. We're going to be in chapter 2. We're not going to deal with the entire chapter, just the first 15 verses or so. Uh, if, you, if you could turn there, you'll, you'll, you'll see that. He, here's what's going on. Well, uh, let's, read, let's read verse 1. Joshua chapter 2, verse 1. Joshua, son of Nun, secretly sent two spies from Shittim. Go look over the land, he said, especially Jericho. Especially Jericho. So they've crossed the Jordan. They're about to now figure it out, and so, so they're, they're, I'm sorry, they're going to cross the Jordan, and then they've got to figure out what to do when they get there. What happens? How do we overcome? How do we fight? How do we go forward? And honestly, their worst, their largest challenge is their first one is Jericho. Probably, I'm, I'm saying this out of my experience, probably because Jericho is on the edge of the land, therefore it gets invaded a great deal. Jericho has these massive walls around it. It's, it's highly fortified. It's going to be a difficult target. And probably, to be honest, in all, of, in, in all of their conquest of the promised land, this is probably the most difficult city they'll take, and it's the first one. And so Joshua says, go over, 
Look around, figure it out, and especially tell me about Jericho. That's what they're doing. They're spying. The, the Bible says this. So they went and entered the house of a prostitute named Rahab and stayed there. Did you know sometimes God's plan will take you to the wrong place? These are leaders. These are leaders in the Israelite army. So let's be very honest. Let's be very clear. They not only have to be great military men, they also need to be men of great, of great integrity, men of spiritual depth, because this is an army. This is, this is literally at this point, this is a theocracy. This is a nation led by God himself. They are following the laws of Moses. That's what they've been doing. They've been trusting God at every turn. And so people have to be of good moral value to rise up in the ranks. So here you are. These two men of God are now going to search out Jericho. And the only place they can find to stay is the hooker's house. Y'all, that's the wrong place. Don't you know these guys have got to be sitting there going, Lord, uh, it don't need to be a nice house, a dishwasher, a ditch digger, anything. Nope, Rahab's house. Rahab. Lord. I'm going to catch something in there. <laughs> but Lord, let's modernize this. I'm a good Christian boy. I would never. Lord, but I, but, but, but I, I, I can't go in there. What if somebody sees me? Well, time out. If somebody sees you, whole mission's over anyway. <laughs> you know, sometimes God will take you to a place you don't believe you belong. In fact, can I be honest? honest? Sometimes God will take you to a place that you actually don't belong. But he's using that place for a reason because God knows some things you don't know. God understands some things you don't understand. God has a plan you're not fully, you're not fully in light of. Again, look, 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 God sees it all. We just see a piece of it. And so when God, when they walk into this city, they need protection. They need somebody that is brave. They need somebody that is connected. They need somebody that is committed. They need somebody that, that, that trusts the God they serve. They need somebody that believes they're on the right side. They need somebody that with all of these qualities. And I guess in that moment, God just knows Rahab's the one. Now, to them, all that God sees, y'all, y'all, God sees Rahab. They just see a prostitute. Y'all all right? God says, God, God, God says, this is the one that will protect you. And they think, this is the one that's going to defile me. This is the one that's going to take care of you, God's saying. This is one that's going to mess up my reputation. This is the one that I've called. You know what they don't know? They don't know that Rahab was so committed to their God and was going to become such a central part of Jewish culture and Jewish society that Rahab literally is going to end up in the line of descendants for King David, which means that through Rahab we get Jesus. You see what I'm saying? They thought they were hanging out with a hooker, and instead they're hanging out with the mother of the Savior of the world. Y'all all right? God sees it differently. God understands it differently. And you have to understand that sometimes God will take you to a place that seems wrong. Now, everybody pause. I am not suggesting an evangelistic trip to the strip club. Everybody all right? I'm suggesting we open our minds and let God show us the world around us the way he sees it instead of just the way we see it because we label people. We have a bad habit of labeling people. Sometimes God uses the wrong place. 
The king of Jericho was told, look, some of the Israelites have come here today to spy out the land. So the king of Jericho sent his, this message to Rahab. Bring out the men who came to you. He knows where they are. They, they're not very good spies, I guess. Bring out the men who came to you and entered your house because they have come to spy out the whole land. But the woman had taken the two men and hidden them. She said, yes, the men came to me, but I did not know where they had come from. At dusk, when it was time to close the city gate, uh, at dusk, when it was time to close the city gate, they left. I don't know which way they went, but if you go quickly, you may catch up with them. But she had taken them up on the roof and hidden them under stalks of flax she had laid out on the roof. So the men set out in pursuit of the spies on the road that leads to the fords of the Jordan. And as soon as the pursuers had gone out, the gate was shut. So, hold up. Time out. Lord, you're wanting me to go to the hooker's house. And then we're going to make it because she's a liar. Do I have this right? And God would have said, yes, you have this right. It took courage to do what she did. It took a strength and a fortitude to do what she did. Can I be very honest with you? Again, okay, number one, no evangelistic trips to the strip club. Everybody's got it, right? Number two, no lying to people to try to get them saved. Everybody's all right? Ain't no sense in that. Ain't no sense in that. But at the same time, you've got to understand that sometimes God will not only use the wrong place, God will use the wrong plan. Did you know that God's plans are not always our plans? Can I tell you what life is? Life is what happens after you make your plan. I'm not saying don't plan. Plan all you want to, but plan and keep it flexible because life is going to change your plan. Did I, did, let me say it a different way. Let me say it another way. Life tends to punch you in the mouth. And when that happens, your plans change. It's like that great theologian Mike Tyson taught us. Everybody has a strategy till they get punched in the mouth. I mean, look, the truth is life does that. And your plans have to be flexible enough to move with what God's going to do. Did anyway, If they had sat down in Joshua's tent and Joshua said, okay, here's the plan. Okay, first of all, you're going to go see a hooker. <laughs> then she's going to lie. And, and, and that's the plan. They would have gone, you've lost your mind. In fact, I don't think Josh, I, none of them had any idea how this was going to work out. But here we are. Here we are in this moment. Listen to me. You've got to understand that God's plan is better than your plan. Let me tell you what my plan was. I had a plan, y'all. I had a plan. I can make plans. I'm good at making plans. I was in my 20s. I had a plan already. I knew what my ministry was going to be like. Come on now. First of all, it's going to be in North Carolina. I have this whole teaching I do with pastors called Things I Was Never Going to Do. One of them was I was never going to leave North Carolina. Here we are. So, so, so but I, I had already decided, right? I've been to a lot of churches. I'd seen a lot of things. I knew what I was going to do. I had decided, I had decided in my mind, I am never going to build a building where you have to go outside to get to another part of the building. Did y'all look around when you came in? You know what God did? God sent me to Maryland and gave me a geodesic dome. Now that sounds fun. The dome over there? If you ever go in the dome, there are no support beams inside the dome. It's a geodesic dome. It holds itself together. But here's the deal. All the way around that thing in big, honking, heavy wood is a ring. If you cut that ring at any point, the whole thing will fall down. So you can't expand a a geodesic dome. It's not possible. So I came, the Lord blessed, we filled it up. So we held another service, we filled it up again. So we held another service, filled it up again. Then it got stupid, y'all. It was crazy, everybody, everybody. I can remember one Christmas Eve service 
real Christmas Eve service, and it was so crowded that I was standing on the stage knowing that there was no way I could get out of this building. And it's like, Lord, we got to build another building. And I, I talked to the architects. I need to expand this building. They laughed at me. You can't expand this building. You, you, this is it. So we had to build another detached structure, which means that in my plan, there was one building with one big old church in it. In God's plan, there was four buildings on the property, and three of them were fully established churches, and we now have four churches that meet on this property every Sunday. That was God's plan, not my plan. I could be upset because God changed the plan. Wait, hold up. God didn't change the plan. I could be upset because God didn't take my plan. But his plan's better. So sometimes God uses the wrong place, and sometimes God uses the wrong plan. Verse 8. Before the spies lay down for the night, Rahab went up on the roof. And she said to them, I know. I love that word, I know. I know that the God has given you, that God, that the Lord has given you this land, and that a great fear has fallen on us so that all who live in this country are melting in fear because of you. We've heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt and what you did to Sihon and Og, the two kings of the Amorites east of the Jordan, whom you completely destroyed. When we heard of it, our hearts melted in fear and everyone's courage failed because of you. Listen to what she says. For the Lord your God. that will put her in the lineage of our Savior. She has a faith in God that is deep and strong. Now then, she says, please swear to me by the Lord that you will show kindness to my family because I have shown kindness to you. Give me a sure sign that you will spare the lives of my father and mother, my brothers and sisters, and all who belong to them, and that you will save us from death. Notice we just learned she's got a good heart. She's not just covering for herself. She's not just going to save herself. She wants to take everybody else with her. She didn't say, I'll take care of you. Just get me out of here. She said, you get us all out of here. You're going to take care of my whole family. She cares about all of them. In fact, mm, dare, dare, mm, I don't even know if I can say it. Somehow in God's math, the hooker became the hope. Y'all all right? Look, look, look. The truth is, God took the wrong... He said, he, these men said to her, our lives for yours, they assured her. If you don't tell what we are doing, we'll treat you kindly and faithfully when the Lord gives us the land. Sometimes God uses the wrong place. Sometimes God uses the wrong plan. And sometimes God uses the wrong people. You do understand, don't you, that Rahab is... This is an ancient world. And that she is likely trapped in a given caste system. Just not, she, she likely didn't wake up one day and say, at career day in junior high school, I'm going to be a hooker. That probably didn't happen. Right? She, she, there was a set of circumstances somehow that put her in this place. Those circumstances may have set her in that place, but they did not force how her heart got set as it belongs to God. So that moment changed her. Here's the deal. If we just live with labels, they never find their salvation. Y'all all right? I need to speak to us Christians, conservative Americans. We're real good at labeling people. In fact, can I be honest? I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to blame Christians for this. Everybody does it. Our whole culture has just decided not only that it's now okay to label people, it's now preferred that you label people. In fact, it's required. I'm supposed to judge you based on who you vote for. I'm supposed to judge you based on how you dress. I'm supposed to judge you based on the, the color of your skin. I'm supposed to judge you based on all of this because you can't act in a manner outside of what is normative for the color of your skin or the way you dress or who you vote for. If you're a Democrat, you act like a Democrat. Come on now, somebody stop it. Can somebody please stop it? 
Because if we act that way, we're never going to see what God's plan is because God's going to use all of us to get this done. Do you understand? The truth is we got to quit saying these are the wrong people. we got to look for God's people, not the right people. Because what we are looking down on, God might be planning to use as a pathway to a salvation. You see this? Because God was using Rahab not just as a pathway to their salvation. She was going to be a pathway to the Savior. God will use the wrong place. (laughs) Wrong. God will use the wrong plan. And God will use the wrong people. But because we're so righteous, are we going to let him? So this weekend, uh, we've had the girls with us a lot this weekend. Amanda is working on some financial things. She's doing some financial work. And so she's working on that with with Tammy down in South Carolina. And uh, so... You know, we, we agreed, uh, the grandparents on both sides agreed we'd help out Robert because, you know, Robert's got church this weekend. So uh, long story short, we've had, the, we've had the grandkids at our house. Oh. Now, I'm not complaining. Don't you hear me complaining? But I, but, 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 but I do get tired. <laughs> I do. There's a reason young people have children and, and, and old people babysit. There's a reason. And so, uh, so, uh, so we've had them for a long time. We had all three of them uh, for a long time over the weekend. Uh, you know, Nora, Charlotte, and Louisa. We had all three of them for a while. Louisa is easy enough. She's in your arms, but then she starts crying, and it's hard to take. You, you, you get it. If you've had more than two, you get it. You're outnumbered. There's no way around it. So, um, so at any rate, we we've had them over the weekend. Uh, in fact, last night we even had we had uh, we had Nora, Charlotte, and Micah because Micah came over and stayed for a little while. So we've had kids around us all weekend. We're picking them back up again this afternoon. So y'all pray. All right. So um, so we had them, and I I love it. I love it. I don't want to hear anybody. Don't want, to want any of you to hear me complaining. I love it. Right. So last night I'm tired. Um, and uh, Robert had just come back over the house. He was picking up uh, Nora and Charlotte to take them home. Uh, Luis is staying with the other grandparents uh, last night so that Robert would be ready for church to, today because he's preaching down at, down at uh, Calvert. And so, uh, so we're sitting here, and so just we got their bags. We got them ready to go. They're in their PJs. And before they go, Tina and I decided I would FaceTime Amanda so they could see their mom, right? So, so I did. I FaceTimed them in. I said, girls, here's your mommy. So they come running over and they're looking and, and, and you, you know how, you know how you can, you, you can hold the phone like this or you can hold it like this. Yeah, that's Charlotte. Uh, you know how you could do that, right? So, so I have the phone like this and the two little girls are right here and their faces are all up in the screen and it's just, they're, they got to be like on top of each other to see. And Nora's like, Lottie, boo, Lottie, boo. So I, 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 I moved the phone like this. And Nora went, no, Papa, you're doing it wrong. I went, what are you talking about? I'm doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong, Papa. You can't do it that way. And I said, I said but, but she can see both of you better. There's a no, Papa, no, no. And she starts getting emotional. So I, I lift it up. And I did it this way. And then they're like scrunched in again, right? And she's like, Lottie's in my way. And Nora melted. Nora just melted into a puddle and then took off to the playroom and like leaned over on the bed in the playroom and I mean huge tears. She was crying huge tears before she left me. And she's now in the play and I'm going, it's what, what it's your mother. You know, I wasn't in a pastoral state of mind, I guess. I was still in grandpa's state of mind, but I wasn't in pastoral state of mind. You know, so so I am sitting here, I'm going, what? I can't. Robert walks over and says, Give me the phone. He takes the phone and he walks into the playroom. I want you to hear me. Nora had a set of expectations for that day. She had thought during the day because she'd heard us say it that we're going to FaceTime her mommy later. In her mind, she had set up a set of expectations for what that was going to be like. And we weren't meeting them. And it was the end of the world. Because this is her mommy. 
and she needs to talk to her. And I was messing it up, and Lottie was messing it up. And it was real in her mind as she melted. And she ran away. I've got her blessing right here. And she ran away from her blessing because the plan wasn't right. Can I just tell you, I wouldn't be a good girl, Dad? <laughs> We've established this over my lifetime. But Robert's a great girl, Dad. And her father picked up her blessing and carried it to her and sat down beside her and said, Sweetheart, I know you're upset. But I'll let Charlotte talk to mommy in a minute. Here, talk to your mommy. I would be a terrible girl, Dad. But I raised some good men. I want you to hear me. God does that. Sometimes you'll curl up in the back of a suburban and sit angry. Until God sends the blessing past and you see it fly by and go, oh, I don't, I don't know what that is. And sometimes you'll be sitting melted into a puddle. And God will come sit beside you and say, sweetheart, listen, right here's what I've got for you. You know what you can't do? You can't be so stubborn that you won't look at the blessing when God brings it. You see that? I could have refused to look out the window the whole time back from the road to Hana. She could have refused to listen to her daddy when he brought that phone back in there. You can't do that. Sometimes it ain't right. Y'all listen to me. Sometimes it just ain't right from our perspective. But it was what God had planned all along. So my question for you is, what are you going to do? What are you going to do when you end up in the wrong place with the wrong plan and the wrong people? Are you going to let God show you where the blessing is? Or are you just going to sit in a corner and pout? Holy Spirit, I pray right now that in this moment you'd speak to us. Lord, there's somebody in this room that they're upset because their life has not gone where they want it to go. And if they were very honest right now, they would say that you took them to the wrong place, you've put them in the wrong plan, and they're surrounded by the wrong people. Lord, I pray that you would open up our eyes. Let us see things the way you see it. Maybe we are in the wrong place, then move us. Maybe these are the wrong people. Maybe I do have the wrong plan, but move us. But Lord, if it is your plan, give us the grace. Give us the courage. Give us the strength to stay there. Father God, there's another group of people here I, I, I just want to pray for right now. There's some folks here that are convinced they're Rahab. And somebody here is convinced that they are so far gone that you can't do anything with them. They've slapped that label of untouchable on themselves. But God, you intend to take that untouchable life and change the world with it somehow. Even a small world around them, Lord, you intend to use that person and you still love them. I pray, Holy Spirit, that in this moment, a wave of your acceptance would just wash down over. God, let us know that no one is beneath the God of heaven because the God of heaven is the one that will lift us all up from anywhere circumstances may have us trapped, but God is above our circumstances. Labels may have us trapped, but God is above our labels. But God, there's somebody else here and they've been looking at somebody the wrong way. Perhaps they've been looking at a child with a judgmental tone. 
Perhaps they've been looking at a spouse with a judgmental, angry tone. Shift that, Lord. Father, carry our blessing to us. And then give us the wisdom to wipe away our tears and interact with the blessing you've given us. And we'll give you praise. Amen. Hey, y'all. Thanks for checking out another sermon from the New Life family. Here at New Life, we exist to love God and love people. If you want to join us in person in La Plata, our services are Sundays at 9, 1030, and noon. If you're looking to take a next step of faith or have any questions for the team, click the link in the description and fill out the Connect card. We'll see you all next time.